Hello everyone, I'm Tony again and today we're going to do talk about something more serious. Um, we have already discussed how to make uh, a literature review, how to choose your thesis topic. So the next step is how do you make the survey questionnaire? That's a very common question. Um, what, what goes into my survey questionnaire? So it's actually very simple. Um, what you can do is you go to the statement of the problem, you copy paste it, and you put it in the in the beginning of chapter four, you know, um, and you try to find out uh, what you are. I mean, chapter three methodology. You what uh, you try to find out what you are trying to uh, answer in your in your in your study so because that is where um, your survey questionnaire will be based on what you are asking in the statement of the problem so that's very important that your statement of the problem is very clear and very concise and they are independent of each other because if they overlap it's going to make your study a bit more difficult to make so how do you go about making a survey questionnaire first of all the first part would be the personal data of the person answering so number one you do not put a name do not put names you should not know uh, the names of those who took the the survey questionnaire so as to so as to prevent uh, them influencing your results so usually you just give it a number you no know? um, maybe for America it's going to be a very long number for the Filipinos, um, yeah, it's not very long. So, what you do um, for the profile, the first part of the questionnaire is the uh, profile of the respondent. So, uh, that's the important part. You want to know which um, characteristics you're very interested in, in the profile of the respondent. Normally, gender is there, um, age, uh, occupation, um, like how many years do they work for this company, or how many years have they have been doing this thing. So basically, it gives the profile of the respondent gives you a general idea of who the the person answering the respondents are. Uh, for example, if you're doing a school-based uh, uh, research, you can put the, the ages of the of the respondents, the genders, and then later maybe you can uh, make a conclusion regarding a certain problem and how it's affected by the age or by the gender of the respondent. So <clears throat> basically the first part of the questionnaire, which is the profile of the respondent, just tells you what whatever information you want about the about the uh, about the statement of the problem so so once you have that once you have the the profile of the respondent it can also include um, like earning capability it can include like how many miles you run in a week so make sure whatever your study is make sure that the the data in the the profile captures everything you need okay next the second part of the survey questionnaire would be uh, usually I put statements. So this is for a quantitative um, style of research. Quantitative means you are going to use a survey questionnaire. So what you do, um, you pick a Likert scale. So usually the, mo the most common Likert scale is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 1 being the dangerously lowest and um, the highest one usually five or seven is the most agreeable no so that's what i choose most agreeable uh, moderately satisfied uh, satisfied and then you go from stars again and then you go up no? so you have um you have um you have this liker scale which has um, an interpretation for each number so um, a common question to me is 
what do you use? Do you use a 5-point Likert scale or a 7-point Likert scale? In my case, I use a 7-point Likert scale because it broadens the, the curve, no? So it gives your respondents more leeway on how to answer your survey question. For example, if you have 1 to 7, uh, 1 can be strongly disagree, 2 can be slightly disagree, 3 can be agree, 4 is neutral, 5 is um, disagree, 6 is moderately disagree, 7 can be strongly disagree. So I prefer using the 7 point Likert scale because it distributes the, the, the respondents and also I do not really like um, answers which are in the neutral. I really want the respondents to decide. So, if you go to the second part of this questionnaire, you have to make statements. So, it's very important that you know your statement of the problem. So, because each part of the survey questionnaire should answer your, your statement of the problem. So, there are parts there where you want to compare variables. You have to make statements which uh, are very hewn closely to what you have written. Because you want to find out if if your hypothesis is correct or not. So that is why um, I prefer the 7-point Likert scale than just the 5-point Likert scale. So when you have that, usually I put 10 to 15 to 20 statements. So depends on how you research. Depends also on the information you want to zero in. So since... Since... Um, so when you make the statements, um, it just it's not a question, it's a statement. For example, um, I like to eat Hagen Das. So the research uh, the respondent will just choose one of them. No? Is it strongly agree, strongly disagree, um, and then neutral? Because I don't want the answers to go to the neutral, that's why I spread them over a seven point Likert scale. So when you have the questionnaire already. Um, that's usually do not make the questionnaire very long because um, your respondents might not have the patience to shade especially now when you are under a calamity and uh, we cannot really um, go back to the normal school setup um, so most students if you interview them now they'll be answering that on the go but at least that also gives you a clear idea of how people in the urban areas live. Will they be able to survive uh, what you survive? So anyway, um, that concludes my discussion on the survey questionnaire. If you have any questions, just contact me. Oh wait, is it correct? Oh here, <laughs> sorry. You may email me at tonyfabe at gmail.com or give me a message at plus 63915-042-3051. That's also my Viber. So if you have Viber, you can... Yes, that's also my Viber. Okay, so if you want, you can photo, sh photo this later. Okay, so I hope to, to hear from all of you soon. Um, I hope you learned something today on how to make your survey questionnaire. Um, if you want me to check your questionnaire, you can always email me there. So everybody, thank you very much for your time. Um, hope to catch you soon. Take care.